Hello and welcome to this special guest lecture on graphic design. Uh, my name is Michael Atkin. I'm an assistant professor here at K-State Polytechnic and I teach classes in web design and digital media. A uh, little bit of background about me. Um, so I've had experience in graphic design for about 20 years. Um, I graduated with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in graphic design and then uh, got a master's in digital media design as well. Um, some of the jobs I've held uh, previously have been a graphic designer and web designer. I've been an art director and webmaster for K-State. And uh, most recently, before teaching, I was the creative director for Kansas State University. And in that position, I oversaw uh, not only just graphic design, but web design, um, video production, uh, as well as uh, social media design as well. So um, graphic design is something I'm very passionate about, and I'm really excited to uh, share some basics with you today. Uh, hopefully uh, give you some resources that will help uh, aid in your assignment that you're doing this week, and uh, give you some inspiration on uh, just design in general. So the first uh, thing that I want to talk about are the elements of graphic design. Uh, these are what I would consider just the basic elements that um, you should consider in any kind of design um, that you're working on. Uh, first one would be the basically the line, uh, just a line. Um, so, in some in some facet, the you can find line in every kind of design out there, <clears throat> whether it's a solid border, a dotted line, um, something that basically just divides uh, areas of a design into different sections to make it more readable for the viewer. Um, and it kind of just varies uh, depending on uh, trends. Before uh, the last five, 10 years, uh, there was, you would see a line um, used in uh, almost uh, every kind of design, uh, maybe overused in some, in some aspects. Uh, more recently in design, uh, it's shifted to more of a modern, a very simple, um, lots of white space uh, in the designs, and uh, you don't see line is used as much. Um, just kind of depends on uh, the usage for the design. Uh, if you have a lot of information that you're trying to get across, uh, it would be uh, good to maybe think about how you would use line to separate that information, uh, again, to just make it more readable for the viewer. The second part. Um, that I'd like to talk about is the shape. Um, so shape or form, um, I would say, is the second most used element of uh, web design or any kind of design, really. Um, basically, just different lines combined to form different shapes. Um, and this can be done in a multiple, uh, in multiple uh, types of design. Uh, it could be something where you use a real simple shape, um, you know, geometric shapes, something like that. Or in like uh, the example I put on here, uh, it's more of a, it's, you know, the shape is used in more of a conceptual way um, where you see here uh, the little guy is running with the Olympic torch um, and then you have, it looks like a big plume of smoke. Um, and so the headline is Olympic catastrophe. And um, so the use of that shape kind of gives um, the feeling of, you know, this catastrophe, a lot of smoke, um, but, used in a you know a pretty interesting way um, it also helps in this example it kind of breaks the design into three uh, separate areas you kind of have the top right uh, with the headline um, you have the artwork uh, which kind of divides it you know where they use the shape and then the bottom left area is uh, kind of the, where the text uh, starts for the the, the article in this uh, specific design uh, textures are another um, important um, part of design. Uh, sometimes textures can be overused. Um, actually, textures were really popular, you know, a few years ago. I um, mean, even going back into the uh, early 2000s, uh, you'd see a lot of design using uh, multiple types of texture. Uh, more recently, it's um, you, you see a lot of uh, clean, uh, what I call clean design, where you don't use a lot of textures, just solid, solid shapes. Um, but textures can be useful uh, in certain aspects. Uh, so like the example here, um, it's a poster design for um, 
like a, a music festival. And so, you know, they wanted to come up with a concept of this, you know, like a poster being, um, you know, put on a concrete wall or something, you know, in an urban area. So it's kind of been weathered, um, you know, it just has that kind of textured look. So it kind of helps the design. So uh, texture is just something to think about um, when you're coming up with um, the initial ideas for your design. You know, is it going to help the design? Uh, if so, then that might be something that you consider. Um, color. So color might be might, might be the most important uh, element of design in some aspects uh, because it's the most uh, visual and it can really impact uh, the way a design uh, looks and feels. And you know you don't have to be a professional graphic designer to notice color and notice if it's being used well. So uh, in this example here, uh, it's a poster for uh, that new movie, uh, Thor Ragnarok. And so the, the whole marketing behind this movie was, you know, it was kind of throwback to the uh, late 80s, early 90s kind of video game uh, feel, you know, really fun, lots of energy. And so uh, using multiple colors in this design actually uh, really fits well with uh, the brand uh, that they were going with for this uh, specific movie. Um, but sometimes um, color can be overused. Um, maybe the best option for a design would be to use just a one color or two color. You know, it kind of just depends on the subject matter and, you know, what, what's the most important um, you know, visual element that you're trying to uh, convey to the user. So, you know, think about color. Um, you know, it's not bad if there's no color. Sometimes just black and white uh, is the best route. Uh, it can be really uh, powerful if you have some um, photography that's uh, just used in black and white. Uh, just really depends. So just kind of think about color. And I'll show some resources here at the end for uh, coming up with color schemes. The next uh, element is value and so this is pretty similar to color it's just um, kind of how dark or light uh, a design feels and kind of the mood that um, is set with the uh, amount of value in a design uh, so the example here uh, is a poster for a surf uh, women's surf and film festival so you know it has a very light and airy uh, feel to it you know the value is uh, really light and airy, which goes along with the subject matter um, <clears throat> of a surf and film festival. You know, it kind of has a little bit of a fem feminine look to it. So, you know, it really helps uh, this design um, in all aspects, uh, going with the, the type of values that were, they were using. The last element here is space. And so this is really crucial to his design. Um, you know, something to always look at is the amount of white space or negative space in a design. And uh, the right amount of white space can actually be uh, very helpful uh, to a reader or viewer. You know, it really can help um, set your content apart and make it easier to read and process. Uh, sometimes you see designs with, uh, there's just no uh, empty space on the page at all. And actually that uh, can really hurt a design uh, because when the viewer is looking at that, there's just so much um, to process that they can't really uh, make sense of it. So by incorporating, uh, you know, just the right amount of white space in the proper areas, you know, it can help a design. Like the example here, um, it's, you know, they got six facts um, or uh, six steps here for a, uh, an article. And so, you know, you look at it, the, the, the large use of the numbers there with the uh, text and then the white space, uh, it just makes it easier to, you know, you, you could process information um, on this uh, design pretty easily. So it's uh, really just to help the, the reader um, process information. <clears throat> uh, the next uh, area here are uh, what I would consider some of the basic design principles to uh, be aware of when you're working on design. The first one is balance, and that's just how um, how the elements are distributed throughout a design uh, in the layout. You know, some some designs have a uh, are very balanced. Um, they use um, you know, like in this example here, 
they use a grid where the equal uh, amount of space is given to the photography and the uh, logo and the color. Um, sometimes designers might go for a more unbalanced look, you know, if they want, um, you know, the text or the headlines to be very um, large um, compared to something else on the page, you know, that they want that the viewer to call attention to those elements. Um, you know, sometimes an un unbalanced uh, setup is the way to go. So it just depends, again, on the subject matter uh, that you are, that you're dealing with in the design. Um, dominance and priority, uh, kind of similar to balance. Um, so like in this example here, the most uh, dominant uh, part of the design is the photography, uh, the picture of the jet there. So um, that's really uh, what they want the viewer to see first. Um, the uh, text there, uh, the headline next to the jet is kind of the secondary um, priority. And then towards the uh, bottom is the, the third area, uh, which is the uh, like contact information and a little bit more um, information about the, I'm guessing about the jet. So uh, just depending on, um, you know, your design, what you want uh, to be the dominant area, uh, again, it could be photography, it could be text, it just kind of depends on uh, what the, the purpose of the uh, design is. <clears throat> um, the next principle would be proportion and contrast. Uh, so it's, you know, you always want to have s some, some contrast in your design. Uh, so like this example here, uh, you see the photography in the middle, uh, which is, uh, you know, a pretty strong photo. Um, as far as the subject matter, then you have the, the background there uh, and the photo is kind of white. And so by using the black uh, bands of color on the top and bottom, uh, you know, it really sets that photo apart. And so uh, the contrast really uh, helps, helps that photo. Um, and then proportion, you know, you want to make sure everything's proportioned well. Um, you're using um, type in a proportionate way uh, that makes sense and fits within in the design. Uh, next area is typography. Uh, so typography is just the style or appearance of text. Um, you know, it's something that is extremely important in design. Uh, you know, something to think about is whether a serif font, um, like the, the large font you see here on the, uh, the example, the headline, um, you know, if that's the appropriate text to use or if it's a sans serif, you know, sometimes serif fonts are more formal, um, you know, it could be more serious, whereas a sans serif font might be less, less formal, uh, maybe, you know, subject matter isn't quite as serious. So just something to think about, um, you know, it's always good to uh, uh, test different fonts uh, just to see what works the best with your design and subject matter. Um, so the next uh, few areas I'm going to talk about uh, the overall composition of a design and uh, some things to think about. Uh, the first one is the golden ratio. Uh, so this has been around for a long, long time. Um, you know, actually, Leonardo da Vinci, a lot of his paintings and um, drawings uh, use the golden ratio. And it's just um, it's a, a way that the, the human eye works in kind of this spiral uh, pattern. And so that's something that a lot of designers kind of take into effect, um, you know, when they are working on a, a layout. Um, it's kind of this uh, aspect of how, how the eye moves and uh, setting up their um, layout uh, in that manner, which is uh, kind of similar to uh, what we call a Z and F layout. Um, so there's been studies where they track the human eye uh, when it, um, like, for example, uh, looking at a web page or things like that. And they kind of uh, scientists have actually tracked the human eye and see how it works, and um, for the most part, um, the, the eye when it's looking at a screen or a, an ad or something on paper, usually it'll start in the top left and kind of make its way across to the right and then back down at an angle to the uh, left, and then then back across to the right. So kind of similar to how um, how you read, you know, go left to right and then go down. 
and then left to right. So um, that might be something to think about too in a layout. You know, maybe you want your logo or your branding in the top left. Um, you know, your next important piece of information or a photo in the next section down, and then so on. So uh, just another uh, thing to kind of be aware of when you're working on your layout for your design. Um, another really important uh, part of design is the grid. Um, coming up with a grid uh, for your composition, uh, which just adds good structure, um, keeps everything um, you know consistent throughout a design. So it, that might be something that you think about as well as maybe you come up with a grid uh, for your layout and then use that throughout a consistent uh, pattern uh, within your design. Uh, so these are some resources and um, uh, I'll go ahead and pull these up on uh, the web just to kind of give you a preview and then uh, you'll be able to uh, go to these um, uh, links as well in the PowerPoint or PDF that's uploaded. So I'm going to close out of there and I'm going to open up a web page here. So um, the first one is uh, behance.net. And this is a site that's owned by Adobe, and Adobe makes uh, the Creative Cloud uh, software, which uh, most professional designers use, which include like Photoshop, uh, InDesign, Illustrator, uh, you know, all of the programs uh, used for professional design and layout. And um, this site here is actually kind of more of a like a portfolio site um, that designers can upload their work to, uh, just to share it, uh, get comments. Um, you know, and this also serves as a nice tool for uh, coming up with ideas for um, designs that you might be working on. So uh, one thing you could do, um, you can just go to the search area here. Um, and maybe you're looking for ideas for uh, typography. Uh, you can do a search there. And then so any uh, piece of work that a designer has uploaded that tagged um, typography in it uh, will show up here in the search and so then you can just kind of you can open up designs and take a look at them and so um, I use this site a lot um, you know on a weekly basis uh, just to uh, kind of immerse myself in design ideas. Uh, the other um, uh, resource for inspiration would be Pinterest um, so if you don't have a Pinterest account um, I'd suggest uh, creating one and there's all kinds of design uh, inspiration out here. So like here I did a search for layout design and uh, you can see there's just tons of um, different uh, pins here that people have um, tagged uh, that have to do with layout design. So this is another really good uh, resource for coming out with ideas for uh, layout. Um, another one uh, for fonts, uh, typography specifically, um, is defont.com. So this is a site that just has thousands of fonts um, and they kind of organize them up here on the top uh, based on the style. So like if you're looking for a uh, like a handwritten maybe a calligraphy style font, script font, you could click that and there's um, all the fonts here tagged. So uh, some really good fonts um, available and most of those or actually all of them on this site are free uh, to use. Another resource, uh, you might need photography in some of your designs, uh, stock photography. So uh, this site here, P-E-X-E-L-S Pixels, is a good site um, for uh, photography. So say I like this shot here. Um, <clears throat> you know, it says here that it's free for personal commercial use, no attribution required, which is nice. So you'd be able to download that photo and use it uh, in your design without having to worry about any kind of copyright law. So this is a good site uh, to use. Uh, you can always use Google as well. Um, just make sure when you do an image search that you're filtering it uh, to make sure you're using uh, the photos of, uh, that are tagged for um, reuse uh, without any kind of copyright uh, laws attached to them. Uh, last site uh, here is uh, the color resource I talked about, uh, it's color.adobe.com and uh, this is for coming up with a color scheme so maybe I want a uh, like a triad scheme which would be kind of like three different types of colors here. Uh, you can move um, colors along this wheel and as you do um, 
it'll give you uh, at the bottom here kind of some color options. Um, I could do like a monochromatic scheme. So if I just wanted, um, say like a let's do purple here, um, it'll give me a bunch of different options here for uh, purple uh, color scheme, and they'll give you the RGB uh, values down at the bottom here, as well as the the web uh, hexadecimal um, values as well that you can uh, use. So a good site for color, um, definitely. Um, check that out and play around with it. So um, so that's all I have for uh, this lecture. Uh, again, if you have any questions, uh, refer to the, the first slide and the PDF uh, that's attached in the module. Uh, my contact information is there. So if you ever have any questions, feel free to uh, give me an email or uh, uh, stop by my office or give me a call. Thank you.